Okay, so which of the following will have the greatest kinetic energy? You must always look at the temperature as your indicator for kinetic energy. So Ke is going to be direct with temperature, and that's about it. There's nothing else that can affect Ke but temperature. So the highest uh, temperature, actually they all have the same exact temperature. That means they'll all have the same exact Ke. Which gas has the highest density? You have to know this equation, which is not in your equation sheet. Molar mass is equal to dirt over P. And um, so density is equal to molar mass times P, R times T in the bottom. Now, all the gases have the same R, all the gases have the same T. Right now, the focus is going to be only on the molar mass and the pressure product the higher the product the higher the density so now for example we're going to start with f2 the uh, pressure is 2.0 times the molar mass of f2 which is going to be 38 that's going to be 76 the case of the n2 the pressure is 4.0 times n2 is going to be 28 so that's going to be um, 112. And then for the O2, that's going to be 5.0 for the pressure times 32. The whole thing is going to be 160. So the biggest one is going to be, uh, the biggest this is going to be for the O2, essentially. Um, and then for question 12, you're asking for the number of the moles of the N2 is closest to the following. So, of course, N2 is a gas, so you're going to have to use PV is equal to NRT with um, N is equal to PV over the RT. And uh, the pressure in the case of the um, N2, the pressure is equal to 4.0, the volume is equal to 5.0, R is equal to 0.08206, and temperature has to be in Kelvin, it already is, as 200. Now it's time to run the math. And I got 1.20 mole. 1.2 mole, the answer is going to be B. Okay. Uh, for question 13, we're talking about a weak acid with a strong base, right? And um, right now, our information is that we have a weak acid with a strong base. Of course, the equivalence point is going to be basic. PH. So the equivalence point is going to be the midpoint of that vertical line, which does correspond to more than 8. So it is basic. But then if you were to use HCl with an AOH, that's going to be reacting a strong ash with a strong base. That means the pH will be 7 at the equivalence point. So look for that. Which one has the pH of 7 at the equivalence point? So you should take the midpoint of the vertical line, which would be still basic here. So it's not A. Um, it would be basic here, so it's not B. It would be, yep, that's basically 7. And here would also be 7. So it's either going to be um, C or D. So how do we find out? It's about the volume, right? So they both, so here the, the volume of the equivalence point is 15. And here the volume of the equivalence point is 7. So how do you figure this out? You must pull out the titration equation, which is the molarity of the acid, the volume of the acid, is equal molarity of the base, the volume of the base. Now, the molarity of the acid is given to us as 0 0.10, and the volume of the base is given to us as 15. The molarity of the base is given to us as 0 0.10, and now the volume of the base is going to be obviously 15, right? ml so it's going to be um, choice c okay now for um for question 14 um we're talking about um the reaction is thermodynamically favorable yet you know there is nothing forming as a product and this is actually an example of something called kinetic control which is the case where the delta g is less than zero so it's negative the reaction is favorable Yet the reaction is not happening, and the reason is because we have a high activation energy. So to overcome this problem, we simply have to increase our temperature, because that would give our particles more energy to overcome the activation energy. Okay, And so by increasing the temperature, you're going to have more collisions 
with the energy required to overcome the activation energy okay and so the best answer here is going to be choice c question 15 here we have two compounds compound one and compound uh, two and obviously they have differences so this one here has a hydrogen bond right and so it's going to be more polar and if it's giving you more polar, it's going to have more boiling point, which is the case. It's 118 Celsius. Okay. And so we're talking about why would they, you know, have different boiling points, always boiling points for uh, covalent substances, but on the IMFs. So compound two has hydrogen bonding that is lacking in compound one. Okay. So it's not about the shape. It's not about that. It's about the polarity because of the IMFs. Okay, um, and so compound two has hydrogen bonding, so it's going to be choice D. Okay. Question 16, um, here we are discussing um, half reactions of a galvanic cell. In a galvanic cell, the higher number is the cathode, while the lower number is the anode. And so cathode over time will increase in mass, but anode over time will decrease in mass and so the nickel will decrease in mass they're asking about the increase in mass which would be the cathode which is the ag the ag will be increased in mass it's going to be experiencing reduction at the cathode but oxidation at the anode so of course uh, ag is going to be the one increasing in mass so it's not going to be c and it's not going to be d it will be increasing in mass because we have reduction occurring so it's going to be choice a Um, question 17, here we're going to be mixing two reactions using Hess's law. So it seems that we have to have Cu2O as a reactant. That means we have to flip our second reaction. We got to flip our second reaction. Okay. And by flipping it, the delta H will flip. So the delta H will now be 171. Delta H sign, I mean, will flip. It's going to be 171. Okay. And um, we have two CO as a product, which we still do here. Okay, so that means we have not flipped the first reaction. We have not changed anything about the first reaction. So it's going to be still negative 312. So I'm going to say negative 312 plus 171. And the answer is going to be um, choice B. Question 18, we have a rate law. And it seems that this is the second order, and that's the first order. So if you plus them with each other, you get three, which is the third order. Um, question 19, you want a buffer whose pH is closest to three. Simply pick the pKa that's closest to three, which is a 3.25. And so that pKa belongs to HNO2, weak acid. So you must have HNO2 in there in the choices, which only choice B has. Okay, um, question 20, here we are dealing with KSP and Q. Now you have to just know that KSP versus Q. If KSP is more than a Q, we're going to have toward the product, move toward the product, that means no precipitate. And if KSP is less than a Q, we have to go toward the reactants, that means we have to form a precipitate. Okay, now, so um, we know that the um, KSP is going to be all the points in the, on the curve for some values of Ag plus and Cl minus, okay? And um, they want point Y, okay? Point Y, which is here, right? And so let's see what does that mean, the shade versus the unshaded. So they're saying that the net process that happens at any point in region Y, right so um, region y seems to be outside of region x and the question says that all the points on the curve in the following diagram okay represent values of h plus and cl minus in which the product of them is equal to ksp so if you pick any point here and you multiply the cl minus by the h plus you get ksp let's pick points that are you know let's say right below y so let's say here so if you multiply the cl here by the Ag plus on the y-axis, 
how would that compare to the concentration of the Cl minus multiplied by the Ag plus at point Y? Now look, at point, um, at this point here on the curve, uh, you know, the Cl minus times the um, Ag plus will give you Ksp. But then uh, at point Y, which is the blue one, the Cl minus times the Ag plus will give you the Q. And so obviously at point Y, we're going to have a bigger number, right? Why? Because the Ag is bigger. If you want, let's give it numbers. Let's say here Cl is 5 and let's say here Ag is 5. So, at, uh, so the Q is going to be 5 times 5, which is 25. But then at the red point, Cl is going to be still 5, but then Ag is going to be, let's just say, uh, 2. Uh, so 5 times 2 is going to be a 10. So it seems that the Ksp is 10 and the Q is 25. We're going to have the Q is bigger. And as you can see, the arrowhead is pointing to the left side. We're going to have to go left. And if we go left, that's where the solid is. That's where precipitation happens. So precipitation is going to happen, not the solution, because the Q is bigger. And so the answer is going to be choice C. Okay, so here we have to compare the internuclear distance, which just means the length of the bond for H2Cl2 and HCl. Now, um, they're all actually going to be single bonds. So it's about how many shells are in each element. So H, for example, has one shell. Cl has three shells. H has one shell. Cl has three shells. So the biggest combination is going to be for Cl with Cl. The more the shells, the longer the bond. So it's going to be choice B. Okay, now we're going to be having equimolar amounts of H2 and Cl2. Let's write the equation now. Actually, it's already written out for you, right? And um, it says, okay, so look, here we have two gas moles on the left. We have two gas moles on the right. So that means as the reaction proceeds, right, you go from two gas moles on the left to, go to two gas moles on the right, the pressure is going to stay constant. The answer is going to be A. Okay, now, uh, building on the same reaction, so H2 plus Cl2 giving you 2HCl. Um, it seems that you have 4 H2, you have 5 Cl2 based on diagram. The reaction goes to completion. That means you must do the ICC table. You must put 0 in the beginning here. You must put minus X, minus X, plus 2X. Now, um, so since the H2 has less numbers, it's going to be our limiting reactant. So it has to become zero. So if four minus X gives you a zero, X is equal to a four. So five minus four is a one. Zero plus two times four is an eight. You must see eight HCLs and you must see one Cl2. Now Cl2 looks like this. Yep, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight HCLs, and we have one Cl2. So the answer is going to be choice C. Question 24. Um, we're talking about the bond enthalpies here, and they want delta H. Now, look, if you're given bond enthalpies or bond energies, Delta H is equal to the bond enthalpies of the reactants minus the bond enthalpies of the products. Now, I recommend you draw the reaction out. So it's going to be H with H, Cl with Cl to give you two HCl. So you're going to have reactant, you're going to have a single H to H bond, 432, a single Cl to Cl bond, 239, minus two times HCl, which is four, two, seven. Let's see how much we get. And I got negative 183. The answer is going to be B. Question 25. Um, we're supposed to be knowing which of the following is the rate law. Now look, whenever you see a straight line going up, right, from, from a y-axis, that's not zero. For one over the concentration, that means we're dealing with the second order. Okay, 
And so the answer is going to be power of 2. The answer is going to be D. Now, of course, someone's going to say, wait a minute, but I know that this means the first order. That's true. If you see a curvy line for concentration versus time, it means first order. But that must correspond to a straight line going down if you have ln of that concentration over the y-axis. But you don't have a straight line here. You have a curvy line as well. So it's not going to be the first order. It's going to be the second order.